<laughs> so you know that feeling when you're finished with a candy bar and you just dump the trash on the ground even though there's a trash bin right next to you? <laughs> well, Ljubljanians don't know anything about that. Ljubljanians are people from Ljubljana, Slovenia. And yes, that is a made-up word because I just made it up because I have the power to do so. So today we're talking about trash. And no, I'm not talking about your ex. We're talking about actual rubbish, garbage, garbage, smeti, the trasheroo, the raccoon amusement park. I'm gonna talk about trash that used to be in Ljubljana, which is the capital of Slovenia, that is now proudly one of the greenest cities in the world. And if you wanna fact check me on that, you cannot, because if you Google the cleanest cities in the world, you will find this list. New York and London. <laughs> nice try, nice try, no. This used to be an old landfill of Ljubljana that is now green and attracts wildlife. Why is this important? It's because I want to show you that with the effort of the entire city, wonders can be done. The story of Ljubljana's journey towards zero waste began in 2002. That's 10 years after Slovenia got separated from Yugoslavia, mind you. It started with a separate collection of paper, plastic and glass. When I was a little girl, we had a paper collection day every year. And it started already when I was in kindergarten and then also in middle school. You would bring whatever flyers, old magazines and newspapers you had at home and they would be sold to a company that actually buys your old newspaper and then the profits would be donated to children in need whether that be children without parents or ch children who need special care and with that they taught us three things one to be responsible with your trash two that your trash can actually bring you money and three to develop empathy for other human beings in Slovenia, you can actually still sell your old paper. And it has been proven that paper can be recycled up to seven times. In Slovenia, we use about 50 kilograms of paper per year per habitant. And that might not seem like much, but around the world, 540 million tons of paper are produced every year. That's a whole lot of trees. A good 30% of all trees that are cut down globally are used for paper production. And I don't know if you know this, but trees kind of are the reason why we're still breathing. And if we continue to remove them, this is not gonna be good. It's not gonna be good, people. So around 4 billion trees are cut down just for paper production per year. And a lot of that paper doesn't even get recycled. If only half of paper would be recycled every year, worldwide, we could save 20 million hectares of trees being cut down per year. Just another fun fact, about five liters of water are needed to create one single A4 sheet of paper. So that's just a little fun fact how recycling, yes, actually works. And Ljubljana is the prime example for that. But Ljubljana didn't stop just at paper. In 2006, the city started collecting biodegradable waste door to door. Now, separate collection for bio waste is required since 2023, generally in Europe. They're trying to expand that by 2025, a separate collection of clothing and hazardous household waste. So laws are being implemented to create that all over Europe, but Ljubljana kind of started two decades before that already. In 2013, every doorstep received bins for separate waste. It's so normalized in Slovenia to recycle that you don't even think about it anymore. You have bins that are separated by color and you just separate your waste. And the results speak volumes. In 2008, Ljubljana recycled only 30% of their waste. Today, that figure is close to 70%. The amount of waste sent to landfill 
is now decreased by 95%, which actually puts Ljubljana at the top of the recycling capitals in Europe. In addition to door-to-door -door collection and the bins that you have at home, Ljubljana also has two collection sites. One of them is actually so busy, approximately 1,000 people visit it every day, that they are planning to expand into at least three more locations in maybe 10 smaller ones. So that means that recycling and disposing of trash is a community effort. Everybody is participating and everybody is doing their part in it. It also helps a lot that the majority of us are taught about rubbish and the environment since we were kids. I was raised with an appreciation for nature and my surroundings and schools participate in not only the collection of old paper, participate in cleaning campaigns. We are taught about the environment, the planet, the impact we have, the footprint we have as humans. And then in high school we are taught the same and there are many campaigns that encourage individuals to participate in doing their part in the grand picture. And generally, I've never met anyone who would just dump trash on the ground. In Slovenia, it's just not a thing you do. Zero waste stores are emerging in Ljubljana and Snaga, which is a waste department, runs their own packaging-free vending machines for household supplies. And you might think that tourism would change that because after all, Ljubljana is becoming more and more popular. In 2023, Ljubljana recorded over 1 million visitors and 2 million overnight stays. This is actually the highest increase of tourism in entire Slovenia and it marks 21% increase from previous year. If you take one look at Ljubljana in the summer, it stays incredibly clean. There are also waste collectors that roam on foot and collect all the garbage that is lying around. In the special vehicles, they sweep the streets with rainwater that was collected from rooftops at Snaga. And they use biodegradable detergent when cleaning the streets. There's another special edition that was added to Ljubljana for locals and local businesses such as bars and restaurants, which is underground collection of waste. There are special underground units all over the city that collect separate waste. It kind of gives the whole recycling a bit of a bougie vibe, so there aren't any trash bins on the street, but just underground units. It kind of looks prettier and it's kind of funkier. There are currently 67 of those underground units in Ljubljana. And mind you, I have to underline here that Ljubljana is a small city. The locals only have to walk a maximum distance of 150 meters to their closest bin, which makes dumping trash and recycling very very easy and if you think that it ends there no it does not for those of you who are interested in the cost of this and how much this costs the cities and the government and this is just so expensive that not every city can afford it recycling actually saves money together with other seven slovenian municipalities who implemented similar measures managed to prevent 15,750 tons of municipal waste, which saved $3.3 million. The head of PR at Volka Snaga, which is the waste department, says, zero waste doesn't mean we'll wake up one beautiful morning in a world with no garbage. It means we'll recycle as much as possible, separately collect, reuse things that can be reused, and of course, prevent unnecessary waste. It is very true that humans produce a lot of trash. I am no saint in this department. I am not saying that I recycle the most responsible way that I probably could. I still use a lot of pa plastic packaging because sometimes I have no other choice. And I am not at all, I'm not at all putting myself on a pedestal thinking that I am a high example, but I do my best. And just doing your best, I think, matters the most. You don't have to go zero waste. You don't have to go all crazy in this department. What helps is doing just the minimal thing, which are get yourself a fancy reusable water bottle, buy fruits and vegetables that don't come in plastic packaging. I understand that in the States that is very, very hard. 
Sometimes I can't even find the vegetables and fruits that I want without packaging. I have seen them now start using more paper packaging, which is nice. You can get mesh bags that you carry with you to put the produce in if you don't want to just grab it and put it in your bag. Actually, in Slovenia, we have bio waste bags next to produce so whatever bags that you grab you can also recycle them or they are biodegradable at least in some stores but the mesh bags work just fine however using no bags also works just fine none of my produce has ever gotten damaged just because i didn't use a bag also bringing a reusable shopping bag is one way so that you don't get paper bags or plastic bags and you can also bring your own paper bag you can also get your bills in electronic versus versus paper version. You can compost your waste. Or what I've started doing is I started looking up recipes for food scraps. You wouldn't believe how much you can do with lemon peels and all of the stuff that I used to throw in the trash. It's amazing. You can reuse so much. Another great way to reduce the waste is to buy secondhand and not buy everything new, especially when it comes to clothing. Fast fashion produces so much waste for the environment. I do want to make a separate video talking about how much of our clothing ends up in landfill and how much of it is made in a way that doesn't last. And that's the whole reason why we need to keep buying more and more, not to mention the fashion magazines and the trends. Don't even get me started on that. But buying used and thrifting is also a fun way to get something unique. Also recycling electronics, not just dumping them anywhere helps as well. And definitely buy quality over quantity. Yeah, it costs a little more, but it will last you so long. I have some clothing that I had in middle school and in high school. I patched it up a few times, but it works, you know, it functions. It still has all the buttons and the zippers. But back in the day, the, qual the quality of clothing was a little bit better. So I don't imagine buying something from, from Forever 21 and having it for 20 years. I really don't see that happening. So definitely buying quality over quantity helps as well. The bottom line is we all share one planet and we're all responsible in keeping it alive and nice looking. So yeah, the primary thing that people usually say when they visit Slovenia, especially Ljubljana, which is a capital city, is that it's so clean, how incredibly clean it is. And that is not because we have tiny little elves walking around 24 seven collecting rubbish. It is because everyone participates in it because everyone cares. I hope this inspired you to look at your own waste and maybe implement some changes. And uh, that will be it. Thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video.